Hi everyone, I'm Amy Booth and welcome back to our Blue Rose Kennels YouTube channel. This week we have a variety of topics for you. We're going to be going over some lessons that we teach in our weekly handling class. We're going to be reviewing some of the masks that we used in that handling class. And we're going to review uh, training your dog uh, tips if they don't want to hold their head up while moving. So stay tuned, you're going to want to pay attention to this one. Hi everyone, we are going to start off today's lesson with our handling class from last night. We have a variety of different students with different strengths and abilities and beginner dogs to a little more advanced dogs. So we're going to get into this and give you our constructive criticism which we've shared with each of our students and we thought it would be very helpful for each of you to hear those comments so you can learn from them as well. Here we have Judge Booth who forgot to wear his belt and has to pull his pants up. Always the funny guy. He's walking down the line and everyone's getting their dogs prepared. You can see everyone is practicing social distancing, wearing their masks getting the dogs accustomed to it, and getting the handlers used to wearing them as well. It's approximately 89 degrees at this time. It is hot. We do take lots of breaks and offer the dogs lots of water. But this is good for them to get used to the heat, and the handlers wearing the masks, the judge wearing the masks, etc. So this is Henry and Cashew. They're showing Judge Phil the bite. They have never shown before at a regular dog show, so all of this is new to them. They get big brownie points for what they've learned in a short period of time. Henry has a challenging dog in Cashew. We are going to use Cashew later in this video to demonstrate how to teach your dog to carry their head up. Cashew fights Henry a lot. Here's Phil adjusting the collar for Henry. Uh, we also want to go over movement patterns with you today. The typical one is the down and back, which Henry just did. This is a, a courtesy turn, and now he's going around to the end. That is the typical pattern judges ask for these days. But later on in the video, we'll also show you a triangle. Now we have Elise and Kevin showing Phil the bite. Elise and Kevin have never shown before, never been to an AKC dog show. But they are learning quite fast as well. She also is doing a courtesy turn. We will have a different movement video later on which tells you what a courtesy turn is exactly and when and why you should do one. You can kind of see that Kevin went a little crooked on down and back and Elise has got a, a little bit too much leash so he has a little bit too much of going his own way. Bill is going to wind that leash up shorter and show Elise how to get a little bit more control of his head and get him focused a little bit better to do a straighter down and back for the judge. So here's Phil on his down and back, which you can see Kevin's a little bit straighter this time. And that's something that Elise and Kev need to work on. And she gets it. Now she's going to wind up her leash. Check it with Phil and try again and definitely it's better making progress and she's gonna go around to the end 
Next we have Valerie and Blue. Valerie's been showing dogs for about eight years. She just showed the bite. That right there, the leash hanging to the side is what some of our prior videos have taught you can be distracting to the judge. So you're gonna wanna make sure you wind up your leash and keep it in your hand so it doesn't fall and distract the dog or the judge. Valerie's gonna take Blue down and back and she does a very nice straight down and back. Free baiting. And she's going to fix his collar and go around to the end as well. Next up we have Susan and Boone. And Susan has had Goldens for a number of years. This is a new baby puppy. It's actually her son and future daughter-in-law's puppy. She came down from South Carolina to visit and see the puppy. And she is super proud of how much they've been working with their baby. He's definitely a natural. And there's Susan cleaning up under the collar, doing a courtesy turn in front of the judge, and doing straight down and back. Again, this is the most common pattern that you'll see judges do at dog shows. She's coming into the judge. Phil wanted her to see how good the puppy moves, so he's going to take the puppy down and back for her to see that he's a super champ. And now she's going to take him around to the end. Notice people are just relaxing when it's not their turn. Next up we have Cindy and her IG. Her IG is a champion so she has gone to dog shows for numerous years as well. Phil's just getting that IG nice and comfortable on the table. And she too is going to take her dog down and back, winding up her leash. And she's not going to do a courtesy turn. She's just going to go straight away from the judge. But she lined herself up right in front of the judge before she took off, which was perfect. Either way is absolutely fine. It's a personal choice and whatever works best for your dog. Cindy's going to free bait her dog. Phil's going to look and send her around the ring to the end as well. Next up we have Mary and her IG. She also has been showing dogs for a while, so this is nothing new to her. She has one of the happiest, sweetest little light G's ever. I think she likes the camera too. Again, Phil's going to make sure that IG is nice and comfortable with the judge on the table. And Mary's going to do it down and back as well. Mary fixing her collar and lead and she did a courtesy turn. The courtesy turn just gives you a couple extra steps before you take off in front of the judge. Sometimes dogs need those few little steps to get their rhythm, stride, put it all together before they start walking. So free baiting and around to the end she goes. You can see me in the corner of the picture helping Lois Lois has never shown a dog before. She has a Min Pin puppy, eight months old, I believe, Maggie Mae.
I wish we filmed the whole class, but we just filmed one exam on each dog because if you saw Maggie Mae at the end of class, it was a great improvement. Wonderful. And I believe this is Maggie Mae's second time on a leash ever as well. So she's going to put Maggie on the ground directly in front of Phil and start walking down and back. Our advice to Lois was not to bend over and not to be worried about the dog and getting her to walk. It was to stand up straight and the dog will learn to walk by her side. So as she goes around to the end, she's going to straighten up her back and start walking. And over time, like I said, by the end of the night, Maggie was walking like a champ. So now we're going to move on to the triangle. It is an additional pattern that sometimes judges ask for. We have Valerie going to demonstrate it with blue. It's when you do a triangle shape straight away from the judge. You're going to turn to the left, go down to about the corner of the ring, and you're going to come back at the judge shaping a triangle. Sometimes judges like to see triangles because they could see the down and back and a little bit of side movement all in one. Now we're going to have Elise and Kevin also do a triangle for you. And she's doing a courtesy turn right there and then going away from the judge. She and Kev still have to work on straight away from the judge, but they have made humongous progress and we're super proud of them for being brand new to showing dogs. So there was a second example of a triangle. Now we're going to get into uh, working with Cashew and Henry a little bit more. Cashew is extremely headstrong and Henry is new to training and showing dogs, so we're starting him out by using a rope lead and talking to Cashew, walking down and back, trying to keep him keeping his head up, nose off the ground. Sorry about the lighting, it was a bit cloudy on the day we were filming this. And you could see him just give a little reminder, keep his head up. So he's starting off walking, he's starting off on a, a cloth type of collar, and he's going to pick up speed as Cashew gets used to carrying his head up on his own. He has a tendency to just want to put that nose down. So he's going to stop and praise him because he started walking very nicely with his nose off the ground. He's given him a couple reminders, keep your nose up. And then he's going to praise him again for keeping his nose up. We've all had those really stubborn dogs that want to get their way, and Henry's just learning how to deal with it. He's doing a great job. Praise is key. Now he's trying to trot, go a little faster. He's still on the cloth lead. And Cashew's still being a little stubborn. He's pacing, but he had his nose up, and that's what's important. 
and he's praising him for that. Nose up, and he was going a little faster, so he's going to keep trying that. A little faster, and the nose was up. A little faster, he was pacing a little bit, but the nose was up. So it's all about rewarding him for keeping his nose up, and he has to behave. Good job, Henry. Now I'm going to demo with a show, collar, and lead for him. I'm getting Cashew to run with me and keeping his head up. I'm going to do it a few times just to show Henry what I did that worked. So we're going to return it back to Henry, and he's going to work with Cashew again himself. Now he's on a show, collar, and lead as well, and the dog is doing so much better. It can still be naughty because he is stubborn, but look at the improvement. Good job. Much better that time. Again, better. Still pacing, but it's, there we go. And we have a winner. That was excellent. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for tuning in again. As you've seen, we did our class uh, last night, and we were all practicing our... Um, masks and uh, social distancing and protocol for the uh, upcoming shows hopefully to have, be having soon um, you probably noticed that there were different types of masks that people were wearing myself i was trying out this little fine and dandy thing here it's actually called a gator why i do not know but this product is from a company called arctic cool it's used primarily uh before this situation and a face covering for camping or fishing or hiking to cool. It's a cooling device. It can be um, dampened and wring out like some of those cooling towels, with cool towels we have and we see, um, and then put on your neck and worn over your face, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, I found it to be very comfortable. I found it to be um, uh, somewhat easier to breathe through. Uh, the people that I spoke with at class uh, said it was much easier to understand, um, you know, speaking with each other through this. So. Uh, it is a little bulky around your neck, um, but I, uh, it's going to be what I start with when we go back to work. Uh, like I said, this is a product from Arctic Cool. It's called a Gator. It's, uh, this one might be a little pricey. I noticed others online. Uh, this one was $17.99. Um, it's made of an antimicrobial fabric that can be easily washed. Uh, one si it says one size fits most. Not sure what that means. Uh, they work like this. You kind of scrunch them all up like this and, and put them over your neck and as obviously as you as you know you got to keep your hands clean uh, we're not supposed to touch our masks with dirty hands this is a is not perfect for that scenario but depending on uh, uh, what what's comfortable for you uh, I, I think this is a, a valid option you just when needed and you're and you're closer than the six feet for social distancing you just pull it up over your head you can adjust it like this uh, this particular thing didn't fog my glasses last night here in Florida. It was quite humid. So um, it's, it, for me, it, this is what I'm going to work with and try. And obviously you can pull it down afterwards. I recommend sanitizing your hands, hand sanitizer, washing your hands before you put it back up and down a lot. But um, obviously that is you. You're not um, transmitting this to someone else. So if you have to do it a couple of times in the ring to catch a breath when you're distancing, it's not like, you know, you're going to... Uh, affect someone else with it. So hopefully that helps. That's what I'm going to shoot for. Hopefully I get to use it at a dog show real soon. I'm anxious to go back to work. It's been a, been a long time. And thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Okay, for my quick review on the masks that I tried, um, I did try disposable and I did try uh, Linda's mask, beautiful mask. I prefer Linda's mask. It's the most comfortable by far going over my face. It's that easy and it's just like super comfortable. It's barely even touching. It's barely even touching my face on the inside. So I highly recommend this mask. I will link all of Linda's uh, Facebook page links, etc. All of her info in the description box below. And the other thing is, is if you're wearing makeup or whatever else, you can easily put the other mask inside of it and wear them together combined. 
and um, then just change out the inside, especially if you just get sweaty. But um, for me, by far the winner, the um, cooling neck piece that Phil liked, it works for him, but it was just too much for me behind my neck, even if it's a cooling uh, device. Linda's masks are the two thumbs up for me. Thank you for joining us for today's video. We're hoping that you're enjoying everything that you're learning. Don't forget this YouTube channel is free for you, but how you can pay us for the work that we do, preparing them for you every week, is by subscribing to our videos. It means a lot in the YouTube world and it shows uh, YouTube that we are producing content that you are all enjoying. Don't forget to also like our videos and uh, set the bell to notify you anytime we upload something new. Also, don't wanna forget to share this with dog clubs that you might be members of, your family, and your friends. Uh, last uh, Tuesday, we had a, a Spin to Win raffle announced that will be part, uh, happening on Sunday evening, 7 p.m. on our Blue Rose Facebook page. Sorry if you can hear the puppies, they're in their play yard right now. Tune in Sunday evening for that Spin to Win raffle. We'll be giving away uh, four of Linda's masks. They're wonderful. We have four different winners in that Spin to Win, four masks. And just uh, tune in to say hi to everyone because we haven't seen each other in a while and it's kind of fun to say hi to everyone. Uh, so if you want to enter for that uh, Spin to Win raffle, it's the same instructions as last Tuesday. You're going to do the same thing. We're just extending it to this video as well. You must be subscribed to this channel. You must like this video. And in the comment box down below in either this video or last Tuesday's video, just type in mask and any other note that you want to share with us. We're enjoying reading your comments. We're enjoying uh, having conversations back and forth. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in our next video.